And therefore, we are to humble ourselves and serve one another. When we don't, when we're prideful, when we look down on others, we forget who we're following. We don't understand who we follow. We, we forget who we are in Christ. We should be the humblest people on the face of the earth. We're the humble community. We're also the gentle community. Look again at verse 12. Put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness. Gentleness. Why do we deal gently with one another? Why? You know the answer. Because Christ has dealt gently with us. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am humble and I am gentle of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Christ deals gently with you. Deal gently with others. I ask you, how gentle do you want Christ to deal with you? Deal that gently with others. Husbands, how gently do you want Christ to deal with you? Deal that gently with your wife. Deal that gently with your children. Deal that gently with the lost person that doesn't have a clue. Christ deals gently with you. Deal gently with others. We're the gentle community. We're also the patient community. Put on a heart of compassion, kindness, gentleness, and patience. Why do we show patience toward others? Because Christ is patient with us. Christ has shown patience towards you. How much patience has God shown you? You should show that patience to others. Self-righteous people don't have to be patient. I've worked for this righteousness myself. I've done it. Those who fall short, I have no time for them. But that's not the kind of community we are. A gospel changed people show patience with one another because we know that God shows immense long suffering and patience with us. Show that patience to others. Look at verse 13. We are to be a community that bears with one another, that bears with one another. Put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another. Bearing with one another. Why do we need to bear with one another? Because the gospel tells us that we are sinners, <laughs> that we are evil at heart, that we are not good, we are bad. We are bad. We are called to bear with one another because we are a community of sinners. We're called to bear with one another's personality, quirks, mannerisms we don't like, social awkwardness, people that are slow to change and bear with often stupidity. <laughs> you know, we, we don't do things we should. We make dumb choices. And we're called to bear with one another. And before you smile and nod, yeah, I know people I need to bear with like that. Let me shock you. You are that person for somebody. I, it shocked me the, f <laughs> the first time I realized I'm that person for somebody. There's somebody that doesn't, that not just that doesn't like me, but that strongly dislikes my, the way I am, my mannerisms, the way, the way I interact. And let me shock you. It's, there's probably somebody like that for you as well. But if I want them to bear with me, I need to bear with those that turn me off, that their, their personality, we just, we just grate on each other. The gospel calls us to bear with one another. Why? Because Christ bears with you. As odious as someone's personality quirks may be to you, just imagine how bad your sin is to Christ. 
bear with one another. Bear with one another. Christ bears with you. Bear with one another. The gospel makes us a community that forgives one another. Look at verse verse 13. Bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Do you see how Paul explicitly grounds this in the gospel? It's explicit. You forgive. Why? Because the Lord forgave you. That's the gospel. You forgive. Why? Because of the gospel. God forgave you. Therefore, you forgive others. Otherwise, we're like the wicked slave in the parable who is forgiven the great debt he could never repay and then goes out and chokes his fellow slave and says, pay me back what you owe me. Pay me back. I'm not going to forgive. You were forgiven a great debt that you could never repay. All the sin of your life. How can you hold a small sin against your person? How can you hold that against someone and not forgive? How can you hold a grudge when God has forgiven you sin immeasurable? Forgive others. Why? Because he forgave you. So also should you. Whoever has complaint against anyone, forgive. The gospel makes us a community that forgives one another. The gospel also makes us a community that loves one another. Look at verse 14. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. We are to be a loving community. Why do we love? Why do we love? 1 John 4, 19, we love because what? He first loved us. Again, it's the gospel. We love because he first loved us. We love because Christ loves us. Jesus said, by this all men will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. If you love one another, are you loving one another? By this all men will know you are mine. You belong to me. You are my disciples. If you love one another. John says in 1 John 3, we know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brethren. He who does not love abides in death. You want to know that you pass out of death into life? Do you love the community of Christ? Do you love the brethren? I'm not talking about a a romantic love. The world has romantic love. But a Christ-like love, is that in your heart toward others? We love because he first loved us. May you this morning and every day of your life be so blown away by the love that God has for you that it becomes natural to love others. You just overflow with that love. And and here's an image you can apply to all these things. Scripture says that God has poured out in our hearts the love of God. The Spirit does it, pours it out in our hearts. Picture like a cup being poured into overflowing so it flows out on everything around. It's the same with God's love. God has loved us so much that that love overflows our vessel and soaks everyone around us. It's the same true for all these things. God has shown so much compassion to us that it overflows our cup and compassion spills all around. He's shown us so much kindness that it overflows. Kindness is all around us. He's shown such humility, such gentleness, such patience with us that it overflows our cup and spills out on all those around us. And John says, if it's not, if if love is not in you, you still abide in death. This gospel of life and love has not taken root in your heart. The gospel makes us a community of love, a community that loves one another. The gospel also makes us a community where peace reigns, where peace reigns. Look at verse 15. Let the peace of Christ reign rule in your hearts to which indeed you are called in one body and be thankful. We are to be a community where peace reigns. 
because the gospel gives us all the peace we need. The gospel gives us peace with God, Romans 5, 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we now have peace with God. You realize that? That was the greatest need in your life at one point. You were an enemy of God, and you needed peace. You needed peace to be declared. Because who can withstand God as their enemy? But the gospel comes, and it gives us that peace. Being justified by faith in the gospel, we now have peace with God. The gospel also gives us peace with one another. Ephesians 2 says, For he himself, Christ, for he himself is our peace who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. Ethnic groups that hate each other, Christ breaks down the wall and brings us together. Economic levels, rich, poor, that are at odds with each other, Christ breaks down the barriers and brings together. He establishes peace between us. And he also gives us personal peace, like Philippians 7, chapter 4, verse 7, uh, that we are to present all of our concerns to God with thankfulness, and then the peace which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. He gives that peace. Peace with God, peace with one another, and personal peace in our hearts. So how could we not be the community of peace? Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you are called in one body and be thankful. Be thankful. The gospel makes us a community where thankfulness abounds. Verse 15. Be thankful. The gospel leads us to ask the question, what do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you did not receive? You remember that? 1 Corinthians 4. What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received? The gospel teaches us that everything is gift to us. Everything is grace. Grace upon grace. You might say, but I've worked for these things that I have. You know, instead of being poor in spirit like Brother Keith's been preaching, we are middle class in spirit. I've worked for these things. I've built it up myself. Friend, you could have been born in 1000 BC in Nepal, born with nothing and die with nothing no matter how hard you worked, and never heard the gospel. What do you have that you were not given? Your intellect, your ability to reason and make good decisions, that's not you. That's a gift. It's a gift. What do you have that you did not receive? Let's not boast we had not received it. The gospel teaches us everything's a gift, and therefore, instead of responding in pride and haughtiness, we respond in thanksgiving to everything. Thankful. Thank you, God. Everything is a gift to me. The gospel puts us in the place of full-time recipients. Everything. We're receiving. We're getting. And teaches us that our response to grace is not pride and boasting, but immense thankfulness that we will never get over. Again, eternity will not be long enough to get over this. For us to cease to be thankful for all these things. The gospel also makes us a word-saturated community. Look at the first part of verse 16. It says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. The word of Christ, let it richly dwell within you. Soak it up. May it saturate your heart. But what does Paul mean by the word of Christ? What does he mean by the word of Christ here? Remember, most of the New Testament is yet to be written.